Hey, what's up everybody? This is John Camp with the Nuts on Eat Chef. Welcome back. Anyway, so today what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a dessert, finally. I know, we haven't done a dessert in a while. Uh, what we're going to do is a pound cake. Pound cakes aren't as hard as you think. In the day, it got its name pound cake because it was a pound of sugar, pound of eggs, pound of butter, uh, and I think that's it. But, you know, we're not doing that, and I don't think any other recipe does that. Okay, so all your ingredients should be at room temperature. We're going to have three eggs, large eggs, a cup of white granulated sugar, one and a half cups of sifted cake flour. Now, for the longest time, I didn't know anything about cake flour. Every time I looked at the, in, in the baking aisle at the supermarket, I couldn't find it because I was looking for a bag. No, you're gonna, it's going to wind up being in a box. Three tablespoons of milk, quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Use, use um, the real vanilla. Don't use the uh, vanilla flavor, it's just not the same. Butter. You can use either salted or unsalted. I use salted. So this is 13 tablespoons, which is half a cup plus one third butter. I use, I use glass bake pans. So you want to make sure it doesn't stick. You can either butter it or spray it. But what you want to do is, is you want to take a piece of parchment or wax paper. You want to you want to spray it. Put the paper down on the bottom and then spray it again. This is just so it doesn't stick. So you're gonna want. I'm gonna do it now and then I'll just make sure that. It's coated again, so you spray it. Put your parchment down on the bottom. And spray it again. Okay, we'll let that sit. Alright, so we're going to take our eggs. We're going to add the milk. Extract. Gonna... Now you could use um, your hand blender. I'm using my KitchenAid with the paddle attachment. If you use your hand blender, you're just going to have to work it a little more because the whole idea is to aerate the mixture so you get that nice fluffiness that's just, you know, that, that you get in pound cake. So we're going to add we're going to add our cake flour, our sugar our salt, our baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. Give that little mix on low. Okay, we're going to stop it. We're going to add the butter. And we're just going to mix the butter just on the low for a little bit until we get you know, until everything comes together, and then we're going to add half the egg. All right, now we're going to add half of this. Again, we're going to start it on low. We're going to get it to come together. We have to stop it and scrape it. We'll do that. Oh, by the way. Your oven should be preheating with the rack in the middle at uh, 350 degrees. All right, so this has come together, so we're going to run this medium. We're going to do this for about a minute. All right. 
that's what you should have. Now, now we're going to add half of the remaining egg mixture. We're going to mix that for, oh, about 30 seconds. make sure that everything is mixed in here okay remaining eggs I just want to scrape it down you always want to scrape it down you always want to make sure that everything is well incorporated be like a thick batter consistency. And that's it. Spray this so it doesn't stick. Just a little bit. Just even it out. Make it look all purdy. Now when you put this in the oven, you might want to have a uh, piece of aluminum foil handy that's been coated with uh, butter. And that'll be um, as it's baking, if you see um, it's starting to brown too much on top, you can just cover it and the butter will keep it from sticking to the top so uh, this way it doesn't ruin the top you know the top of a pound cake has, is, is kind of unique looking and it's got a unique texture and and uh, it's almost what makes the pound cake so now I just want to give it a little tap and now we're going to stick it in the oven oven's been Preheating at 350. And stick it in the middle. And then we're going to set the timer for. We're going to start off with 55 minutes. After 55 minutes, we're going to check. We're going to check in in between uh, just to make sure that the, the, the top's not uh, browning too much. Uh, you'll know it's done when the toothpick comes out clean, you know, typical baking. Um, in this case, uh, I, I don't use a toothpick. I, I'll, I'll use a um, shish kebab skewer. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I wound up going um, the full 65 minutes. Depending on your oven, it's going to depend on whether or not you go uh, the full 65 minutes. So it started browning a little. So it started browning a little on top. I did wind up using aluminum foil for the last couple minutes because I was afraid. But uh, all in all, I think it looks pretty good. So all right. So there you have it. So now what you want to do is, is you want to make sure that that cools for at least 10 minutes maybe longer. The longer you let it cool, the greater chance you have of getting it out in one piece. Uh, so just put it on a rack, just let it sit there 10 minutes, take it out of the rack and then let it cool some more before you cut into it. I know it's going to be really hard, but 
if you uh, if you start cutting into it when it's too soft, it's just going to fall apart. You got you got to let it cool and start to set up, and um, that'd be your best bet. It'd be great. Put some strawberries over it, some whipped cream, and you got yourself like an angel food cake, you know. So anyway. I hope you like this. I hope you try it. If you try it, give me some feedback. Um, you know, hit that like, subscribe, notification button, all that jazz. You know, that's greatly appreciated. Um, and again, thanks to the Anchor Gang for uh, subscribing. Um, you know, you guys have uh, jacked my numbers up uh, big time, and I, I really do appreciate that. If there's something in particular you want to see, uh, let me know. Um, you know, a lot of my a lot of my dishes are first time dishes. You know, things that I just, you know, I, I say to myself, hey, I want to, you know, I want to make this. Uh, you know, and I and I research it, and uh, I wind up taking a whole bunch of different recipes, combine them together, make it my own. You know, some of it is not accurate. You know, a perfect example is my sauce that I did uh, a while back. You know, I got some uh, I got some haters on there saying don't follow me because. Uh, you know, my, my sauce was supposed to be vinegar based and I called it uh, a hogshead cheese and they're like, oh, it's not the same thing and, you know, the, the seasoning that I put in it was uh, more uh, for Spanish dishes. The bottom line is, is, you know what, you're cooking, you're creating, you know, cooking's an art. You know, make it your own. You're not, you know, if you're doing this for fun, there's no, there's no reason to stick to the, the norm. Add your twist to it. If you want to put if you want to put anything in any dish, do it. You don't know how it's going to wind up until you do it. You know, sometimes it'll be a, a, something fantastic, but sometimes it'll be a fail. You'll know not to do it again. Anyway, again, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.